Today we're looking at this Kingston HyperX Fury DDR4 memory which is RGB. It is 16 gigabytes, 2400 megahertz and got a CL rating of 15. Yes, 2400 megahertz, not the fastest in the world, but we want to basically see how it performs against other value memory. Bear in mind this works out in some cases 10 uh, to 15 pounds and maybe even 20 pounds more expensive would mean RGB in comparison to some of the other value memory running at roughly the same speed. So we're going to see if spending that extra money matters other than that RGB lighting. We're also going to see if a 1 gig stick of 16 is better than dual channel, that's two sticks of memory uh, of 8 gig, so 2 times 8 is 16. Um, see if it's any better because usually 8 gig sticks memory or at least in the past have performed better than one larger stick because of the way the motherboards work so we're going to have a look at that and see how good it is let's have a look a quick look at the box it's pretty much a plastic box you it says your rgb you've got your model number writing on the side which is hard to see so you need a magnifying glass to figure out what it is if you see this on the shelf uh, on the back of the box you can't see much other than the warranty card peering through the back. Inside the box all you've got is the memory stick itself, you've got your warranty installation card and a nice sticker. Just checking at the value of this at the moment, current value is £88. So it's quite a bit more expensive than paying for two 8 gig sticks which don't have the RGB. On the memory stick itself you can see where it says HyperX, it's sort of a... Uh, a shiny effect on there, so it sort of reflects. Uh, it also says Fury and DDR4, and on the opposite side as well, you've also got your specifications uh, there, but there doesn't seem to be any writing on the memory stick itself. And the top, which is the bit what you're going to see the most, is where it says HyperX, and you're going to have this RGB lighting, which we'll take some pictures and video of in a bit. So let's get down to testing. In basics what we've done is tested the memory against other memory of similar or the same speed. Some with heat sinks, some without, some well known brands like Kingston, Corsa um, and other brands like Patriot and Team just to see how it actually performs and actually if there's any difference really between the makes of memory you get um, or is it just down to the specifications. We've tested this memory in a average gaming PC um, because, well, what's the point testing it in a high-end machine? Because most people who've got high-end machines are not going to be buying value range memory. The specifications of the machine we're using is a Thermaltake Level 20 MT case with a Gigabyte Aorus B360 motherboard, a GeForce 1060 graphics card, a Thermaltake 700 watt power supply, and we've also got some water cooling from Thermaltake as well. Otherwise, it's set up just as a normal home PC would be, Windows 10 Pro. But we're going to see something very similar on here throughout all the slides. It's pretty much all the results very similar, with some tests running better on the Apex memory, and then some tests running better on the Corsair, and some on the Kingston, and so forth. And even the value Kingston RAM wins some tests as well. But averaging it all out, all out and they all get roughly the same scores, with the only exception would be when we're testing one 8 gigabyte stick uh, in comparison to two 8 gigabyte sticks and even dual channel at this speed doesn't make a huge difference so for example two 8 gig sticks running dual channel don't perform that much better if any than one 16 gig stick which is running at the same speed obviously please bear in mind that results will differ on the systems you use. Using a high-end system, you may get a few different results. Specifically, if you're using an AMD platform like the Ryzen um, processors, they can be quite sensitive to memory speeds more so. But on a mid-end Intel machine, you won't see much difference between the memory. The only thing what we did see where it did fluctuate slightly was temperatures, and saying that, the temperatures were pretty much 
roughly where we expected. The ones with the heat sinks did actually get a little bit warmer uh, in most cases than the ones without the heat sinks, which is uh, surprisingly. Uh, but if you think about it, the actual heat sink is sort of holding the heat in because it's not really getting that hot. The hottest they got to was about 40 degrees, which is generally a lot cooler than most of your components inside of a computer.